we would be prepared to introduce Jevan Hlibovitsky, who is with us now, who has been with us from the start, almost from the start. Thank you, thank you, Jevan, for finding this opportunity for joining us. Jevan Hlibovitsky is a political scientist, director of the Promova Analytical Center. He teaches at the Kiev Mohil Business School and the Lviv Business School of the Ukrainian Catholic University. He is part of the advisory board of the Ukraina uh, television and radio company. He leads numerous uh, shows, uh, programs. He consults uh, various, he published numerous analytical articles for on social and political uh, topics. I would like to give the floor to Panyevhan now to speak on faith and the challenge of trust. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, frankly, I in in continuing this in continuing this relay race, uh, I, I I firstly wanted to say that I'm actually I I would like to really applaud the bravery, the courage of the this 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 kind of this kind of. Uh, this kind of readiness for risk, this kind of risk, risk, risk readiness uh, for the organizers who in, invited me. You know, I'm, I've been uh, schooled by my needs to coexist in the, in in conditions, you know, where uh, people with very different and very strong beliefs in our institutions, and they all have to live together. I've I've managed. I've learned to put statements as a for in the form of the question and when you do that there are a bit fewer there are fewer chances to be simply beaten up on uh, and so uh, to, to catch hands so to speak so i'm not going to say that i know something because i don't i'm a practitioner i spend a lot less time i've spent a lot less time uh in 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 in, in study and in, in in study and in, in, in looking at the at the research of others than than the colleagues who have already spoken I uh, usually encounter the results, the findings uh, in practice when I see something work or not work. And sometimes I see life throwing us new circumstances and new challenges. And at that point I say, aha, uh -huh, so that's what it's like. So let's, let's, see, let's see what we can do with this now. And in 2014, right after the Maidan, to, to continue this Maidan relay, I found myself in this very strange role where I was one of the one of the Ukrainian um, one of the one of the experts, Ukrainian experts who had this mandate to help understand uh, uh, to to various foreign ministries and Western analytical centers what the hell is going on in Ukraine. Now the career path of a diplomat of a Western country with regard to Ukraine was usually very interesting. They would start in, in the consulate in St. Petersburg, where the difference in the, in the income between someone who was paid in currency, in, in foreign currency in the 90s and the 2000s, and the prices gave them the opportunity to feel themselves, to feel uh, extremely rich and enjoy life. Um, part of some, some of the diplomats, and my friends, say that the risky relationship that then arose added adrenaline and made these stays unforgettable. And so, after this kind of romanticized Russia, because they'd already learned the language, well, where the hell are they, they going to go? So they go to the somewhere in the post-Soviet space, trying to take that structure that they have, that structure of beliefs that they formed in Russia and impose them on other post-Soviet spaces. And thus, a diplomat comes to Ukraine and says, well, who's the czar here? Whereas the Ukrainian party looks at this and says, I'm sorry, we don't understand the question. To which the other says, okay, God, you're so underdeveloped. You're so backward. And so as a result, you have these you have these 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 iterations have happened many times when in 2014, 2015, I 
was one of the people who was trying to explain what what is happening and in what categories it could be understood. And the experience that I gained as the son of an opera musician and th then then you have this connection to the theater and the and the, the brief flirtation with jazz in 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 my student years when i believed i play a musical can play a musical instrument this constant need of interpretation because something un something unexpected shows up give me enough courage to be here rather than uh, simply request an earlier coffee break so I want to add some contexts, introduce some contexts. And when Bojana and Bogdan wrote me, and I thought, fine, Faith, Lviv, okay, it's it's all it's all fine. I'll show up. We'll have uh, we'll have several Greek Catholic dignitaries, and then then Orthodox, then a rabbi, and then maybe a mufti will show up, and we'll talk about faith. And then in the end, we will all say a prayer and go home. And then when I saw the Center for Urban History, I understood that something's wrong here. This is something because this is a fairly secular institution. And I so when we started, you know, looking at the topic, I understood that I lied to Bojana yesterday because when I brought I sent in my talking points, they're not what I'm going to talk about. So, you know, bear with me. Uh, we'll, we'll enter the, the jazz aspect of it. Uh, so as far as Lviv is concerned and that we're in Lviv in the Center for Urban History, I think there's a, there's a thing that allows us to have this discussion and that's called safety, security. We are protected here. We are safe here. We have the opportunity to talk about the abstract, talk about abstract things. So you see, the um, Ukrzeliznica, the train, Cancelled, cancelled the trains to Avdiivka because they're being bombed. And in Avdiivka, we probably wouldn't be discussing these matters. But in Lviv, we can. And it's nice because we're in a well air conditioned room. We have water. We have oxygen. We have air. Everything's great. We are. We can uh, safely uh, make use with with the security that is there because of the social structure and historical circumstances and uh, the government etc 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 and we have this security and we talk discuss these things in this in in these secure circumstances and this this s word um it it's critically important and it's interesting that we never once mentioned it today because It arises um, at the foundation. Um, it's, it's a foundational need that every person has. And faith itself is an answer to it. Think back to how many times in life you had to make decisions when you don't know all the circumstances, when you don't know what to do, what the right thing to do is. Is that sufficient faith? Is that sufficient grounds to not make a decision? No, because life goes on. You have to make a decision. And we make decisions based on incomplete data using this same word that says that it has here, up there, right? We believe. We believe, we hope that we have chosen the right, we have chosen the right, we have made the right decision. But ultimately, if we look at... Um, the contexts, the modern Western context, we can um, divide them into three categories. I would divide them into the Ukrainian context, right, just for, our for the sake of our discussion. And this is a context in which uh, security is, a, is, 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 is at a deficit and we are all feeling it. Those of us who are from Lviv, you can just think back to this feeling when you come back, you open the, wa you open the water tap and there's no water, right? Right. Yeah, we we this is not a problem for the past few years, but Ukrainians know what it is to catch water. When I moved from Kiev to Lviv in 06, the city died. Nothing was happening. There was no nightlife because everybody went home to catch water, to, to catch the water, you know, between six and nine. And if you and if you were no, if you didn't weren't there in time for water, you know, you wouldn't smell particularly social the next day. 
the next discourse is the discourse of North, North America. The discourse of North America will be very important to us because it is the discourse of leadership and the discourse of lack of leadership that we're perceiving today, particularly with American exit from Afghanistan. Extremely worrying uh, picture. And the third discourse is the discourse of the EU countries. Forgive me for my superiority. I will say it's the discourse of the illusion of safety. Europeans who think that they are safe. I mean, they do have, they are safe, but they have it uh, at others' expense and they do not wish to, they do not wish to take their own steps to strengthen that security and multiply that security. At the same time, they tell others that they don't, that they fail, that they fail to understand. They have the goal to, to lecture others and not understanding something. And so when, when we talk about Ukraine, you know, in comparing ourselves with the discourse of, uh, European discourses or North American discourses, we see these, um, these, 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 our failures to understand, where we cannot, not just don't understand, where we cannot understand each other. The typical question from North European countries is, why are you so obsessed about religion in Ukraine? And it's hard to say, well, you say, you see the church in our historical memory is perhaps the only institution that no, that didn't kill anyone. Where you immediately question, well, what do you mean? What about Giordano Bruno? And he said, okay, you see, Giordano Bruno was in the part of the world where we need visas to get there, at least until recently. We couldn't observe, you know, Giordano Bruno being uh, crucified. And so it's it's much easier for, for us as the, the image of Nikolai Copernicus, who just in case dedicated his, his heliocentric center system to the Pope, to the Pope, and it worked. So they figured it out after Copernic died, Copernicus died. And so So the Ukrainian optics is an optics of lacking security where the wolf nature, lupine nature of another person is a very recent memory, recent historical memory, but because all of these phenomena of public Morozovs and all these they're they're all among us and they're still there as the experience of the Donbass shows where people would end up in jail because neighbors would call in and say oh they have books in Ukrainian I mean imagining that situation where the level of security drops and one post-soviet Galician calls a different structure to denounce another that's imaginable it's just a question that the level of security is not as low here as it is in the Donbass in the start of the war or in Crimea after the annexation. The structure of, of truths, the Ukrainian structure of truths is more similar to North American one than the European one. And this is very important, a very important uh, conclusion, very important uh, conclusion to our idea of pluralism because most uh, European societies grew up with one denomination and so there there was a very binary scheme you either belong or you don't so yes you can have either social discourses about various discussions where you can have a number ideas various ideas but they're usually within a particular structure so there's a structure of beliefs the North American system looks differently because North America is a, is the place where people from very different traditions found their home and these very different traditions coexist. And so here you have the Jews, here you have Muslims, here you have Protestants of this kind and some other kind, here's Catholics and here's Ukrainian Catholics and here's Ukrainian Orthodox and those Catholics who are Ukrainians, they're not really Catholics, but they're, they're actually Orthodox, but they're, but they're subordinated to the Pope. And all of this coexists. The United States had the, the United States and their culture are a product of of rare circumstances, exclusive and rare circumstances. If you have a common uh, common plot with a neighbor who doesn't like you, it's almost it costs almost nothing to the neighbor to show up, you know, and, and knock you literally cross the field and knock you. 
if you and your neighbor who doesn't doesn't like you also if you also have a, a, a brook then the, the cost the cost of attacking you gr goes up if it's not a brook but a river it's even more costly because now you no, not now you have to have an actual bridge or a way to cross the river if it's not a river but actual tributary then again any aggressive uh, action is even is even more costly and that's the secret for great britain you know to why british culture managed to be so developed because it's so protected because the transactional value of attacking britain is much higher than attacking one continental U european country attacking another continental european country but when in the united states uh proclaim independence this cost is so enormous that the british empire at some point said you know what forget it do what you want and that's when the jealous french say oh you're so lucky they just take and they give this statue of liberty to, to america and say well you're lucky because there's, there's only there's only the, 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 the there's only dover the only la manche separating us from the english and so america becomes an experiment in security and because it becomes an experiment in security we can see how society begins to arise in the united states that has many faiths many religions and at, at its basis and that has or had one basis of course we're talking about the fact that most of for most of the american uh, for most american history the, the main concept were, was the wasp you know the white and saxon protestant all the others had a lot fewer opportunity a lot less social capital etc 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 but eventually we see how all the others groups eventually get a seat at the table or at least the opportunity to get a seat at the table uh, at this point the united states which are looking for a way as a society to 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 improve improve and develop they rationalize the discussion and to rationalize the discussion that's when you need trust uh, so in other words if we have faith as an irrational factor whereas faith is an irrational factor then trust has to rely on some some evidence it has to be evidence-based so eventually you have institutions that work and a society and that sees how those institutions how well or how badly those institutions work and then they judge they they they, they, they judge on that basis and everything's great as long as the world is developing until the world develops that requires the united states as a as a guarantor of security because america is so big and it's so secure and it's so hard to attack the united states find a great business model for its existence they became the kind of the external charger for for us for a smartphone it's a source of secure a source of energy that is always safe always charged and when the tired asians or europeans need it they can actually uh they can they can plug into it and that's how the concept of nato shows up in the 50s nobody wants to and, and, and no one wants to fight the united states and that's how the united states as a member as a nato member become part of the collective security for europe same thing happened with asia it's just it's not a collective belief but it's a, it's not a collective agreement it's a, these are bilateral agreements that allow japan hong kong taiwan singapore to be what they are and exist and in the states everything was great until around september 11th and after september 11th the system broke down and the fact that it broke down was not really noticeable okay what happens on september 11th okay two planes fly into the 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 into the world trade center i was then a correspondent in what in so then on a tv channel i was working on the site of the disaster i it was a very very personal story for me i saw these this this rubble being cleared i saw new york city pro is probably the only time when there was no hubris at all naked vulnerable uh, wounded and in order to maybe um, lubricate the economy a bit the soviet uh, the, the american the u.s government after september 11th decides to introduce 
introduced to it stimulates the economy. This stimulation leads to the fact leads to he heating and stimulating bubbles that already exist and eventually all of this ends up as the crisis as the crash of uh, 2008 this institutionalized something that hadn't existed in american society before there is a first generation whose standard of life living will be worse than the standard of life than that of the previous generation because before that, from the time of the first pilgrims, the next generation always lived better than the previous generation, with the exception of the uh, poor Native Americans who, who was in the path of these Europeans, these conquering, these uh, uh, Europeans who were uh, occupying this space. And at a, poem, at a point when the next generation understood that there's not enough for everyone, that's the moment when it's very easy to explain through the theory of faith whereas previously we look for win-win uh, models where we both benefit at this point we're at, the, at, the, at we, we we compete for resources and when we compete for a limited resource that's where a zero-sum game begins to work we're starting to play the zero-sum game the american society is playing a zero-sum game and when the american society enters a zero-sum game within this very harsh competition in these completely new political circumstances when there is a l large number of groups that believe that they are owed something let's say educated white men it's it's there right in their they believe right now and it's not just that, that there's women who can vote now now it's just now you have to also uh, now there's also non-white people to account for, people of color, and there's no guarantees because your business may, may, may go bankrupt for unclear reasons because that's how the global economy works. That someone does something in Korea or China and it affects you in some specific small town. And as a result, you lose your job. I, I can go further. I mean, look at, you know, when we call a cab, and then the intellectual, you know, the AI now looks for what, what car will show up, you know, so there are no dispatchers anymore. But the dispatchers didn't go anywhere. They, they, they're they simply, they pushed into other spheres or they didn't manage to adapt. And then this, this lack of adaptation becomes this large wave that uh, affects practically everyone. So what we see is how the loss of trust and lack of understanding of what's going on leads to, I mean, what do people do in this situation? They rely on faith. And this is when we, ha when we get another thing that, okay, fine, faith, let's say we talk about faith and as in a religious context of as a belief in God. So let's say we believe for, for, for we, we've existed for many s s centuries. We know what the Bible or the Quran says more or less. We know that these systems that are relatively well regulated by religious interpretation etc etc but we've forgotten that we are in a position where over the past two or three centuries it's not just social development the development of society but also the development of technology has made humanity full of uh, grassroots subjectivity su subjectivity uh, more than ever now, the, the, the cab driver who drove me here from Znesinja, I was about, I, I was a step away from, 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 from death, maybe four times, the way he drove. He was sure that he was right. He knows how to drive. He's a good driver, in spite of the fact that he keeps provoking uh, dangerous situations on the road. And so one of the problems that uh, that arose, one of the things that arose is that belief in God by people does not change the nature of God. But in the belief of these people themselves, who rely now on faith, God is something that they have defined for themselves. And because of this, religious denominations remain only only remain religious confessions in the sense of tradition. They have redefined themselves. I, a few weeks ago, I had this very interesting conversation with, uh, with leading uh, people in the Greek Catholic Church, Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, saying that the Christian movements in uh, the United States are becoming movements of ultra minorities because those movements that call themselves Christian have essentially become political movements. 
their Christian basis has fallen to do to the political temptation. Trump, who uh, preaches hate, nevertheless has the overwhelming support of mass Christian organization that say that God is love. Moreover, that's not the only problem. We, we, we have the same problem too. And the question is like, if we talk about faith that arises as a result of the loss or that strengthens as a result of the loss of security, then we talk about the kind of faith that puts trust uh, in a very precarious position. And that's why we talk about faith as a challenge of trust. So trust, institutions, as well as rules, the institutions we have created over time to ensure, and I will quote the Nobel laureate uh, Douglas North, who wrote that the it is the, the the natural decay is the natural condition of humanity it's this condition in which we don't we don't uh, put any uh, effort into it that's a natural condition if we want development we have to understand that development is the deviation if we want growth we have to it means that we have to continue supporting our deviation through systems of institutions and so what happens because the threats become more serious and the result for the growth of, uh, of, of, of threats increases the, num the, 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 the faiths. So as a result, we have a deconstruction of institutions that ultimately become not flexible enough uh, to become to, 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 to function as, a, as part of the picture of the, the, the that is that, that is available for the subject. Let's say when something falls down on your foot and hits your foot, you have a very limited attention span when you're in pain. And so when you have a high number of pain subjects in society, they, rem they demand simpl simplification. They, 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 they demand simplistic decisions, right? You don't read newspapers, right? We have, we have offices with these names, the Office of Simple Solutions, right? You, have, you live in Lviv, what a safe place. Um, and the Office of Simple Solutions is the Office of Saakashvili that continues uh, its life in Ukrainian politics. And at that point, we find ourselves in a situation that is quite natural for, for Ukrainians, right? This lack of security is something that is known and understood, is a known challenge for Ukrainians that who over the past 100 years pretty much had to deal with one problem, which is what, which is the lack of security. Faith in Ukrainian context is usually is not usually um, does not usually emerge from the belief of every person, because in spite of the fact that the Soviet power uh, proclaimed the sub subjectivity of every uh, citizen, they didn't actually have political subjectivity. I mean, it's probably their least when they were the, the, at their least uh, sub subjective condition, because, you know, if people showed up at, in your house at four in the morning and said, pack your things, the only thing you could do, the only thing you could do that maybe you could bribe them to let your kids go, at least your kids. After these practices that have taken root and this understanding that exists in society, the Western recommendation that corruption is evil is seen in a very particular way because in your experience, well, you don't understand the evil that rules can bring. And that's something that cannot be translated into German or English or Swedish because the experience of these countries, either with totalitarianism, with their own history, or in other histories, is a gen the experience of less less than one generation. In our experience, it's at least a generation and a half, plus a generation and a half, that it, that existed in conditions. This can this can happen again. So we have at least three generations. And when the coup happened in 1991, the Soviet coup, many of the citizens who survived the previous history understood very clearly that we have to take this seriously. This is a serious threat, and. 
in Ukrainian conditions, we have a different situation. Faith is usually institutionalized faith. It's not uh, the, 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 the belief, the faith of a subject. It is mostly good because historically the church did not destroy people and those who and those who spoke against the church did destroy people. And so suddenly we find ourselves in a situation that is hard to explain from the optics that come to us from the European Commission. The, uh, you know, I, 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 an organization like the Ukrainian Council of Church, or Ukrainian Council of Churches looks weird in a democracy. But from the point of view of an agenda that has, it also looks weird from the point of view of an agenda of human rights. But in conditions when the state has the level of trust for their key institutions, there's about negative 30. So, I mean, the, the, number, the number of those who distrust the state beats those who do trust the state by about 30 to 40 percentage points, whereas the church and the social, uh, civil society, and now, of course, the army that the war has started, are the only institutions that enjoy, that have a positive balance of trust. It's not surprising that Ukrainians try to strengthen uh, with informal rules, that which is not working formally. And so we have this unique, weird situation where the lack, lack of security provokes a situation where the overabundance of, of uh, security that masks as faith destroys the basis of American democracy, which is, of course, the external battery for char charger pack for, for European democracy. We'll see what's going to happen after this if after the final of the of the Afga of Afghanistan, we don't see a Taiwan finale, we're already seeing a Hong Kong finale. After the Taiwanese finale, whether we do not see a similar uh, similar finales in elsewhere, and what the U European security system will appear like without the participation of the United States and with the Britain that has now that has now also retreated behind the La Manche, is no longer interested in the continent. And with the Ukraine, that with a completely de depleted low charge battery, is essentially at the front line of all, these charge, of all these challenges. And when faith has a completely different role, because role, because faith in the Ukrainian context is something that no one can take away from you, and that gives you hope in circumstances when rationally the rational side says there shouldn't be any hope. And on this wonderful optimistic notes, I will say that it's time to take to, to break for coffee.